In this video, we're going to talk about rendering fur and hair effects using Octane for Maya. And I'm currently using the Space Pilot 01.MA scene. So I'm going to expand the Space Pilot group here in the Outliner and hide the helmet. And let's hide the spaceport as well. And zoom in on our, our little guy here. So when you're rendering uh, fur and hair using Octane for Maya, you want to use paint effect strokes. Uh, Octane for Maya does not support XGen yet. So uh, if you're working with paint effects, if you're working with Maya hair, you can set it to render as paint effect strokes, or you can paint paint effect strokes directly on the surface. Octane also does not support Maya fur. So paint effects is the way to go whenever you're doing this type of work. So I'm gonna select the head here and in the modeling uh, menu set, I'm gonna to go to generate and let's get a brush. So I'm gonna go into the content browser and under hair, I'll select just hair brown is fine, this one, hair brown. And I'm gonna choose generate, make paintable. I'm going to hold the B key and drag with the left mouse button to get a wider stroke. And we'll give him kind of like a mohawk here. There we go. Nice and extreme. I'm going to select the settings for the stroke brown. Let's go into viewport 2.0 for a second here. And I'm going to go into the hair brown tab in the attribute editor. Let's bring the global scale down a little bit. Let's go into the shape tab and set the surface offset to a negative value so it's kind of in the head. That looks pretty cool. As cool as this guy is going to look anyways. Uh, so now we can go into Hypershade and let's create a material for the hair. So you can use any of the Octane materials that you want to with the exception of the portal material. Let's use the Octane Glossy material. So I'm going to create a new material and let's graph its input and output connections and let's give it a name. I'm going to call it hair mat. And I'm going to select the stroke in the outliner and go to its transform node and find the octane rollout. And here in the material section, I want to type the name of that material. So this is how you apply the material to the paint effect strokes. So I'll type in hair mat. And let's go into hair mat and just give it a nice yellow color. So it's pretty obvious what's going on. And let's render it with octane. So you can see it renders pretty quickly. I'm going to select that node and go to the hair brown tab and just maybe let's bring down the width a little bit. So it's a bit on the thick side. So let's set it to 0 0.004. There we go. That works. So here is our pilot with his new hairdo. So that's pretty easy, uh, but let's say you had hundreds of strokes in your scene. You don't necessarily want to go to each one and have to type in hair mat for each one of those strokes. So this is where Mel scripting comes in handy. Uh, I've written a quick script that kind of takes care of it. It creates a loop and uh, I'm, it's not the most elegant script in the world, but it does work. But let's take a look at it. I'll go into the script editor here. Or the, sorry, the shelf editor. And find that hair mat. And let's take a look at the command here. It starts by asking the user the name of the hair material. So in this case, it would be hair mat. And then it creates a very simple loop where it just goes through all the selected strokes and it applies that material to those strokes. It's pretty straightforward. And I'll include this script with the project files so you can take a look at it and hopefully improve upon it. But that's a great way to uh, deal with applying 
one material to many, many strokes in a scene. So let's say you wanted to kind of change this up so we can get maybe darker roots and lighter tips. In this case, you want to use the W texture. So if you go to the texture, let's go to geometric and find the octane W texture. So I'm going to click on this and connect this to the diffuse channel. So you can see it's now it's connected to diffuse. And when you take a look, we can see that we have dark gray going to white. If I select that stroke, that stroke node, and I'll go to the stroke shape node, shape hair brown, and down here under octane, you have several choices on how to interpret that W texture along the length of the hair. So you can use hair length, segment count, or hair Ws. They kind of have the same effect. It depends on the stroke that you're applying to. In this case, they're all going to look kind of the same. But um, so if I set that to use hair Ws, this is the result that we get. We can also use these sliders to adjust the values along the length of the hair. So you can see how that kind of changed. And we also have like an overall opacity. So if we want to lower the opacity of the hair to thin it out, we can lower that general visibility. Of course, you might want to use this as a way to uh, mix colors together as opposed to just having black and white. So in that case, we can go to the operator section, create a mixed texture. And let's plug the Octane W texture into the amount. And then for the texture one, we'll put in an RGB spectrum texture. Let's make it red. And for the second texture, RGB spectrum, we'll make it green. And then we can plug this octane mix texture into the diffuse channel for our hair material. The result being this lovely rainbow color going from red to green. And you can use the W texture in any of the other uh, inputs for the material. So if you wanted to change the specularity along the length of the hair or the roughness, uh, the sheen, so on. So a lot of creative potential there for creating different looks for the hair uh, when rendering with Octane from Maya. So I've saved the script hairmat.mel in the support files in the scripts folder. For the spaceport underscore Maya, these are the support files that come with the course. So it's right here in the scripts directory. So probably the best thing to do is open that in a text editor, copy it and create a shelf button. And that way, if I, let's say, I'll take my guy here and let's give him maybe a mustache. That's a little bit too radical. beard and go in here length of his mustache and go down here to behavior set path follow up to zero path attract to zero so now he's looking a little bit more mustachey so to run the script, what I can do is I'll select both of those, both of the transform nodes for the, for the strokes, and then click on my hair mat.mel shelf button. This will ask me for the name of the material, which I called hair mat. This is easy to remember. Let's use okay. And let's make sure that we force the re refresh. So it actually renders correctly. 
And there we go. Nice, colorful mustache and beard. This guy's looking great.